In this video I'm going to be showing you how to stack your narrowband data uh, using Deep Sky Stacker and then how to read those stacked images into Photoshop and prepare them and then combine them to produce a colour image. Okay so we're in Deep Sky Stacker I'm using version 4.2.3 and you can see I've already loaded a whole set of files into here. Uh, I've got uh, I've just checked them all and you'll see I've got 36 light frames, that's 12 in each narrow band, hydrogen, oxygen and sulfur. I've got 10 dark frames, 20 flat frames for each filter, 20 dark flat frames for each filter and 20 offset bias frames. So the uh, first thing I'm going to do is to run a registration on all of the light frames. Now the reason to do that is to identify which of those is the highest scoring. So I'll select all of the light frames and the registration but turn off detection of pop pixel, pixels and stacking so we're just registering those 36 uh, light frames and the one that gets the highest score is the one that we'll set as our master reference and that master reference will be used when we stack our HAs will be used again when we stack our O3s and when again when we stack our S2s even though it's an, only a picture from one of the bands you don't need your reference frame to be one of the images that you're stacking and that's really important so that when we get into Photoshop and we want to stack uh, or combine the three bands into a colour image we get perfect alignment between them so that's almost completed the registration one. Okay, so we can now sort by score and we'll put the highest score at the top and you can see that the highest scoring image is this one with 3200 as a score and we'll right click and make sure that use as reference frame is ticked. If it's not, then now make sure it is ticked. Okay, so we'll now do uncheck all and uh, we will go ahead and pick our uh, just our hydrogen alpha light frames. We'll pick our dark frames and check those as well. And then we'll find the hydrogen alpha flats. It's these ones, check those. And our hydrogen alpha dark flats and check those. And then the bias frames and check those. So now I'm going to do register check pictures. I'm going to re-register everything to the reference frame and automatically detect hot pixel pixels and stack after registering. So we'll set that going. And when that's complete, uh, it, the image that it produces, I will save picture to file and record that as my HA stack and then repeat this whole process for the S2 and then repeat again for the O3. And then I'll have three uh, fit files, one for each band, ready to take into Photoshop. Okay, so that's completed generating that image and I'll now do save picture to file and type HA stack uh, and save that and that now repeat that for each band. Okay, so we're now in Photoshop and I've opened up the three TIFF files. We've got the three tabs across the top, the S2 stack, the HA stack and the O3 stack. Now you can see they're very dark and uh, the other thing about them is that they are 32-bit uh, uh, intensity depth. So uh, we've got to do something about that because otherwise we won't be able to do most of the functions that Photoshop uh, provides. So we'll start with the S2 image and uh, we will do first of all an image adjustment levels. Uh, you can see from the histogram that uh, most of the pixels are right down the dark end which uh, is what we can see as well. So if we take the grayscale and drop that right down I'm putting it very very close to where the bulk of the histogram is but just above it. So not going right to the bottom but just very close and just at the right hand end of the bulk of that histogram and click OK. Uh, and then I'm going to do image mode and you can see at the moment this is a 32-bit per channel image 
and we're going to change it to a 16-bit per channel image. Uh, and that comes up with this menu and uh, a lot of people at this point choose exposure and gamma. Now if you do exposure and gamma you have to do all of your stretching or curves and level adjustments by hand and some people prefer to do that. But I find with narrowband data certainly that if you just use equalize histogram you actually get a very good looking result. So I'm going to use that basis otherwise this video will be a lot longer and uh, I want to be able to get a nice quick result. So equalize histogram. Now importantly I'm not going to crop here even though I've got some thin artifacts at the edges due to the stacking I'm not going to do uh, the crop just yet. So I'm now going to repeat that process for my HA so image adjustment levels drop the grayscale down to the top end of above the histogram image mode 16 bits per channel equalize histogram OK and then the oxygen image adjustment levels grayscale down to the top of the Instagram OK image mode 16 bits per channel equalize histogram OK so I've now got uh, sulfur hydrogen and oxygen uh, black and white images and mono images and now we want to be able to combine those into uh, a colour image. Now you can do more work here if you wish to to stretch and enhance these images. So if we take the HA for example, you could do uh, a, a levels adjustment for example and drop the grayscale down some more and lift up uh, the black level to get a bit more contrast on your image. It's entirely up to you. Uh, I'll, do, I'll do one adjustment on each levels adjustment, just dropping the gray level down and and uh, I don't want to kill too much of the fine detail so be careful with your black level you can really uh, kill a lot of your detail if you go too far as you can see just to, just take it to get a nice bit of contrast and then the O3 as well levels brighten up the gray scale raise the dark level ok well that's enough Ok, so what I'm going to do now is create a new image, so File, New, and then we get this dialog, and I'm going to make a 4656 by 3520, that's the size of my monochrome frames, uh, uh, but it's going to be an RGB colour image, and hit Create. So I've got a blank image, and I'm going to switch on the tabs on the right hand side here to Channels, uh, I'm going to turn off all the channels and we'll start with just the red. So I've selected the red channel and we're going to put the sulfur into the red. So I go back to my sulfur image, control A or select all, same thing, and then do either edit copy or control C and then we'll go back to our color image and either control V or if you prefer uh, edit paste now I'm going to select the red band, uh, sorry green band and I'm going to choose HA, control A, control C, back into the RGB image, control V, I've pasted that one in and now I'm going to select the blue, go back to my oxygen image, control A, control C, into my color image, control V. So I now have red green and blue which are sulfur, hydrogen and oxygen respectively and I can now enable uh, the other two colours and this is sort of kind of the moment of truth turning the green on and turning the red on and there is our first colour image so we can now go back to layers uh, and uh, we can now perform the crop You'll notice if I hold down alt and roll the mouse wheel we've got a very nice alignment between the stars and that's because everything was uh, registered in Deep Sky Stacker to the same reference frame. Uh, so now we can uh, take out that uh, edge where you get some artifacts from the stacking using the prop tool and essentially you've got the basis of, uh, 
of hours of post-processing fiddling around at that point. But that is the essence of how to do a combination of the narrowband monochrome shots into a colour image. And I often actually take the image from here into Lightroom and use uh, clarity and noise reduction at this point and can produce very quick results. Okay, so I've loaded the image into Lightroom and uh, just going to show you uh, that we uh, lift the clarity and lift the highlights and maybe up the saturation a little bit as well. Start to get a very nice looking image. You can make individual adjustments to your colours as well. So, for example, if you want the luminance of your yellows to lift, that can be quite dramatic. Really accentuate that wall. And then you can export your image from there. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.